everyone welcome back to my channel so I know it's been a long time uh, today actually makes a month since I did my nails as you can see they look a hot mess and they're really grown out but I was trying to wait closer to Christmas because I'm going on a trip so uh, as you can see all of my bling stayed on pretty good for the most part I'm just missing one there and then I bumped this pinky or actually I think I hit it with a hammer when I was putting up some Christmas decorations so I knocked some of those off but other than that they look pretty good so I'm gonna go in with a pair of nippers and I'm just gonna be removing these big pieces first just make sure you put the nippers right underneath and just nip them off and then just remove the rest of the small ones from around the nail And I just chipped that one with the nippers. You know, I'm thinking about doing a stiletto shape this time, but I'm not sure. And then also I'm going to show you that after doing so many nails and filing so much, I always file that piece of my nail, so I have to go back and fix that as well. But again, I kind of want to do stiletto, but I don't know. I'm kind of scared because it's been like years since I did stiletto, but I know you guys have been asking for it and I just might do it. I don't know yet, but I just might. Okay, so I got most of them. I just couldn't get those off. So now I'm going to go in with my Coarse Drip It. As you guys know, this is what I always use to remove my gel polish. Again, it is a Coarse Drill Bit. And it is a safety one, as you can see by the top of it. I'll show you what a regular one looks like. As you can see, a regular drill bit just is flat on the top. And then this one is a little bit rounded, which means it's not going to cut me whenever I file. You know, if I accidentally file on the skin. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my drill on. And I'm also going to be using my dust collector. As you guys know, this is my dust collector by my cart. And then as well as the drill. So I'm going to go ahead and start. As always, I also wanted to show you guys I have no lifting whatsoever on both hands. No lifting at all. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just remove my gel polish. I always start around the cuticle area and then just following the rest of the nail to get all of the gel polish off. Making sure that I foul around the sides really good and just to get all of the polish off. And of course if you have on regular nail polish then you can just um, Remove it with a cotton ball and nail polish remover, but if you do have gel polish, then you will have to file it off. But same thing, I always start around the cuticle area, 
and then just following the rest of the nail. Alrighty, so I removed all of the gel polish from this hand as you can see that one is chipped So most likely I am gonna be doing a stiletto just because I don't feel like going in and fixing this one So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this hand. So same thing I'm just gonna hold my drill on the other hand and then as you guys know, I like to just go down on this hand and then filing around the cuticle area as well and you can slow your drill down if you need to um just because of course you know it's my less dominant hand so that it's most likely that i can cut myself or something but i'm pretty used to it but again if you are a beginner be careful not to cut yourself and make sure that if you're using a coarse drill bit that you're using a safety one that way you don't cut yourself but as you can see i'm just falling down more like towards the tip I'm just getting all of that gel polish off and then I really like this dust collector because as you can see whenever I don't turn it on I can just see all that dust coming towards my face and then whenever it's, it is on I can see it getting like sucked down um, and even if all of it doesn't go into the dust collector it's still not in my face which is what I need so I'm going to go ahead and finish removing the gel polish from this hand as well. Again, we just remove it around the cuticle area and then just following the rest of the nail as well. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my dust collector on because this dust is all in my face. Alrighty, so I removed all of the gel polish from all of the nails as you can see here is what they look like and now I'm gonna go in with my Tammy Taylor peel and stick cuticle pusher and I'm just gonna be pushing my cuticles back as you can see I have a lot of new growth just because it has been a whole month and this is probably the longest I've been without doing a feel but again I was trying to wait closer to this weekend because I am going on a trip and yeah so i'm just pushing back the cuticles so after i do that i'm gonna go in with my 180 sanding band i'm gonna go ahead and take this one off put my sanding band on there and then of course i always switch the actual sanding band out after each client so i'm gonna go ahead and replace that one with a new one let's put it on 
and then with this one I do slow down my drill this is how fast it was going whenever I, I was removing the gel polish and I slow it all the way down because remember we're only filing to remove the shine from the natural nail so I always start from the right side working my way over to the left side making sure that I get the sides really good because remember this is where our lifting comes from so again start from the right side work your way around to the left side and making sure that you get those sides right here really good because you will get lifting if you don't So same thing for this hand, we're going to file around the cuticle area, making sure we get the sides really good, getting as close as we can to that cuticle area. And then as you can see to do the sides, I'm pulling back the skin, that way I get as close as I can. Alrighty, so I removed the shine from the natural nail. So now I'm going to go ahead and reshape them. I don't usually reshape before I do a fill, but since I'm switching the shape, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I really do not want to, but I'm doing this for y'all because you guys have been wanting to see a different shape on my nails. So I'm going to do a stiletto and I don't know that I'm going to do them like super pointed, but we're going to see what happens. So I'm just filing the same as if I was filing for the coffin, except for this time we're filing um, only on the sides and not, you know, the tip. So just keep going back and forth, making sure that you're alternating from side to side. That way your nail is not crooked. And you just file until you get, you know, the pointing pointiness that you want. I guess that's pretty good. So I guess that is pretty pointy. Oh, I'm not used to this. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same on the rest of the nails. Again, we're just falling at a 45 degree angle. Okay, so as you can see, I cut myself right there on the side, and it doesn't hurt, but whenever you're filing somebody's nails, you want to make sure that you're not resting 
the nail file on their finger because that will happen. You will cut them with the hand file, so make sure that you're careful. And mine surprisingly does not hurt, but it's basically like a paper cut, except for, you know, with the hand file, so make sure that you uh, are careful. Okay, so this is what this hand looks like. Um, I don't know how I feel about the shape. Maybe I should keep this one stiletto and this one coffin. Um, yeah, it's bleeding, but it doesn't hurt. So, oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's no turning back now, but I'm going to go ahead and file this one as well. Same thing. We're going to be holding our file at a 45 degree angle and then just t like taking turns or switching back and forth. And remember, as always, instead of moving the file back and forth, I move this hand back and forth because it makes it easier for me to just do it like this. Um, so remember, alternate between side to side. That way it's not, you know, leaning to one side and then you're going to end up crooked. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this hand off and I'll be back. Alrighty, so I reshaped all of them. Uh, I still don't know how I feel about this. Hopefully it grows on me, but I am not about this life. So I'm going to go ahead and dust them off. I'm also going to go ahead and get my dust collector out of the way. Alrighty, so I'm using my Monomer Warmer by OPI, and this one my teacher gave to me. It is pretty old because I know OPI does not make these anymore because um, I know I had a lot of people asking me about it. But again, they do not sell these anymore because I even tried to look for some online and they are just nowhere to be found. Um, but again, I think at the bottom of it, it says that it was made in like 2006. So it is really old. But um, for my acrylic, I'm using my Mia Secret Pink which is a translucent pink which is what I have on now and then for my primer I'm using my OPI Bondex that looks like this and I'm just gonna apply that on the natural nail remember only apply it on the natural nail if you get it on the skin it will burn like it it's gonna burn on this pinky I guess not I didn't put it all the way on the side but make sure that again you only apply it on your natural nail Alrighty, so we did the primer and then for my brush I'm using my alpha brush in a number nine and it's an oval shape so I'll be sure to leave that information down in the description 
as well as the promo code so i just dipped it into my monomer to clean it off so it's nice and clean and as you can see i always like clean it and leave it in its shape that it's supposed to be which is an oval shape so now i'm gonna go ahead and dip it in and then dip it into my powder as you can see i didn't grab like a huge ball i just grabbed what i need place it down closer to the cuticle area and then as you can see i'm gently pushing it up towards the cuticle and then just brushing it down towards the tip remember make sure that you only work with the product that you need don't just add acrylic everywhere because if not you will or because if you do you're gonna have a lot of falling to do at the end make sure you go back and clean around that cuticle area and remember to look at your nail from different angles as you can see my tip is pretty thin so I'm gonna go ahead and add um, one right in the middle and then brushing all of that towards the tip just like that so as you can see I have a nice arch I don't like my nails super super thick but as you can see I have no issue with my nails breaking again these were on for a whole month and I didn't break any the only one that I cracked or not cracked but I nipped it off with the nippers was this one but that's it so that's pretty good here as you can see I did two beads and that's how it looks same thing for the other nail again I dip my brush into the liquid wipe it off dip that into the powder get a small bead placing it closer to the cuticle area but not on the cuticle and then pushing it back with my brush if you were just to place it right on the cuticle then you're gonna flood your cuticle and then it's gonna be all over the place and it's gonna be hard to get off the skin so just do it like this and then gently brush it down towards the tip and then clean around your cuticle area really nice and simple it's really important that you make sure that you're not working with too much product because if I was to grab just a huge bead, I promise you it would be all over my finger. It would just be everywhere and it's going to be a disaster. So just work with a little bit of product at a time. And that's also why I say to use a smaller brush because then you can't really just pick up like a lot of product with the smaller brushes. I placed another bead. Brushing it down towards the tip again. Wiping the sides off. And then as you can see, I always wipe the sides like this, just because it helps with it not taking away from my shape a lot. Um, that way I don't have to do a lot of falling when it's time to reshape them. So again, I dip my brush into the liquid, into the powder, get a nice size bead, place it closer to the cuticle area, gently pat it down. As you can see, I do everything really gently and then brush it down towards the tip. And make sure that if you see the acrylic running to the side, that you hurry up and clean it up because you don't want it to dry. Even if it's just a little bit like this, make sure you get that off. Because I promise that little bitty piece will cause your nail to lift. So it's better to be safe than sorry. Okay, I'm gonna place another bead. So for the most part, I usually do like two beads for feels, um, just because I like to go back and make sure that, you know, it's nice and strong and it's not going to break off. So that looks pretty good. Same thing again. Picked up my bead, placing it closer to the cuticle area. See how I'm just gently patting it down. I don't just pat down really hard. I do it really gently. And then once it's closer to the cuticle area where I want it, I just brush that down towards the tip. 
and even when you're brushing make sure that you're really gentle because you still want this area back here to be a little bit thicker than the rest of the nail because that's where your strength comes from so if it was like super super flat then most likely if I was to hit my nail on something it would break All right, and now lastly, we have the pinky on this hand. So same thing, you grab your bead, place it closer to the cuticle area, pat it down, brushing it down towards the tip, and then making sure that you go back and clean the cuticle area. Alrighty, so remember it's always going to be the same steps. You place your bead, pat it down, brush it down, same thing over and over again. It's just a matter of practicing over and over and over again to get, you know, that flawless application that you want. And even like to, you know, make sure that you get a little bit faster. Um, you can just time yourself and try to beat that time every time. But usually whenever I'm doing someone else's nails, it takes me like an hour and a half to do a full set with designs and then an hour to do a feel. So that's probably, I mean, I feel like that's not um, bad as far as timing just because, you know, I like to take my time and make sure that they look good. You know, I don't like to just rush my work. So again, an hour and 30 minutes for a full set and an hour for a feel. So this is what this hand looked like with just the acrylic so as you can see they're pretty smooth and that's why I don't have to go back and file a lot so you want to make sure that you work smarter and not harder because then if you have like super thick nails then of course you would have to do a lot more filing but this is what they look like from the sides again I don't like my nails super super thick I like them just like this so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and do the other hand so same thing dip your brush into the liquid Dip it into the powder, place your bead down closer to the cuticle area, pat it down. And when I'm patting down, I'm pushing up close to the cuticle and then I'm brushing down towards the tip to blend that in. And then as you can see, it got on the skin on this side. So I'm going to go in with the tip of my brush and wiping that off. All right, so now I'm gonna look at my nail from the side. As you can see, it's still pretty flat right there, so I'm gonna go in with another bead. Remember, it's really important that you look at your nail from the sides because that's gonna determine whether you need to add some more acrylic or not. If it has a nice arch, then no, you don't have to add more, but if it's still kind of flat, then yes, go back and add another bead because again, you don't want the nail to be super flat because it will break.
Alrighty, so I finished doing the acrylic application. As you can see, here is what they look like. So now I'm going to go in and reshape them. As you can see, um, the shape still looks pretty good, but as you can see, like right here, the edges are pretty rough. And that's what happens after you apply the acrylic. So you want to make sure that you come back and reshape the nails. This is something that you do not want to skip because that acrylic does take away from your shape. Again, as you can see, I have all those rough edges. So I'm just gonna go in and do the same thing that I did when I was shaping them in the first place. But this time, you know, it's not a lot. We're just taking away those rough edges and making sure that we have that perfect shape that we want. So falling at a 45 degree angle. And sometimes you might also get acrylic that gets stuck on the side like right here. So you want to make sure that you separate that and make sure that you file right there so the acrylic is not stuck on the skin. Alrighty, so this is what they look like after I reshaped them. So now I'm going to go in with my fine drill bit. I'm going to be using this ceramic one because I don't know where my other one is. But it just does the same thing. It's just a fine drill bit, but it's just a different material. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my e-file. And at a medium speed, as you can see, it's not going too slow or too fast. So like right in the middle filing around the cuticle area starting from the right side going over to the left side and here is the angle that I hold my drill at as you can see I'm going right along that cuticle area you don't want to like just drill all the way in there you literally like you are putting your like you are putting your um drill bit like in between the cuticle area and the acrylic but you want to make sure that you don't drill down too hard because if not you will damage their natural nails so again this is the angle that i hold it at and then the rest of the nail i just file to make sure that it's nice and smooth but for the most part i have to focus around that cuticle area to make sure that i don't get any lifting As you can see, I'm just holding the e. Alrighty, so as you can see, I'm able to see where the cuticle is, where the natural nail is down there, and where the acrylic is. That way, I know that the acrylic is not on the skin. So same thing, starting around the cuticle area from the right side, working my way over to the left side, just going back and forth. Holding your e-file or your drill bit against the nail. And then just following the rest of the nail to make sure that it's nice and smooth. And as you can see, I don't have any bumps or lumps on the nail. So I still go back and just file it um, just to make sure that it's smooth anyways. Alrighty, so last one. 
On this hand is the pinky, so again, following around that cuticle area, making sure that we keep our drill bed against the nail. Just going back and forth, and then always remember to keep your drill moving. You don't want to keep it in one spot for too long because it will cause friction and it's going to cause your client's nail to burn. So make sure that you keep that in mind when you're working. Okay. So it's looking pretty good. As you can see, I'm able to see where the cuticle is, where the natural nail is, and where the acrylic is. So, and yes, I did kind of cut myself just a little bit. <laughs> But um, yeah, so this this hand, so now we're going to do the same thing on this one. The only difference is that with this one, I have a little bit of a hard time trying to file, you know, the rest of the nail. So the way that I do it is I just literally file down. But as far as the cuticle area, uh, same thing. Start on the right side, work my way around the cuticle. Now you do have to be a little bit more careful. I know I do um, when I'm doing this to not cut myself, but same thing. Going around the cuticle area, filing the rest of the nail to make sure that it's nice and smooth. And then just doing that to each nail. Alrighty, so I finished filing the nails. So now I'm gonna go in with a buffer and I'm just gonna buff them all. So after you file with your hand file or your e-file, they are gonna be a little bit rough. So what this does is just get rid of all of those scratches. So we're just gonna literally go in and just buff each nail, just going back and forth. And then I also like to file underneath the nail because sometimes you have those rough edges on the sides. Alrighty, so I went ahead and buffed all of them. So now I'm going to go and go wash my hands and I will be right back. Alrighty, so this is what they look like after I finished doing the acrylic application. 
So again, I'm just going to leave them like this until like Thursday or even tomorrow just because I want to wait closer to my trip so I don't mess them up. But as you can see, um, I don't know, I'm, this is something that I'm going to have to get used to as far as the shape because I haven't had it in a while. But I guess it doesn't look bad. So um, I'll see you guys tomorrow or Thursday and we'll see what I come up with. Alrighty y'all, so it is the next day and I am back to do my nails. I wanted to wait until tomorrow, which is Thursday, to do them, but I'm not going to have time. So I did a lot of nails today, so as you can see, I have acrylic on them and a little bit of polish. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my hand file to reshape them a little bit, um, just because, again, I did a lot of nails today. So I did mess them up here and there. Um, but I still don't really know what I want to do exactly. I kind of have an idea, but I don't know how it's going to turn out. So I'm going to try it out on one finger and see how it looks. But again, I'm just going to kind of reshape my nails a little bit and then rebuff them um, because they are pretty rough since I didn't do a top coat or anything yesterday. I just did the feel and that was pretty much it. Okay, so I filed them a little bit or shaped them. So now I'm just going to go in with a buffer and just gently file them or sorry, buff them again. Okay, so I don't think that I want to do a color just because I just don't want to mess with any polish, especially since I still have quite a few nails to do. Um, I just want to do some bling. Um, I know I did ask y'all yesterday what, you know, I should do. And a lot of people said bling, so I think that's what I'm going to do because you could just never go wrong with it. So I'm going to try something first and see if I like how it looks. So... I'm going to be using my SS6, sorry, I'm going to be using the bigger pieces, my SS6, SS12, my Mia Seeker jar resin, my wax pencil, and then some either gold, probably the gold caviar. So, I'm going to go ahead and start with my middle finger. Let's see. I just applied the glue. With my wax pencil, I'm going to pick up that bigger piece, place it right in the middle. I'm going to get the SS12. I'm just trying to test something out and see what I like the best. So.
Okay. I think I like it, maybe. Maybe not. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it and let's see. I'm gonna keep going and we're gonna see where I take it. Sorry, I'm not talking a lot because I'm concentrated, but I'm literally just using my Miesica Jar Resin, my wax pencil, SS6, SS12, and um, the bigger pieces as well. And I'm literally just doing this as I go. I don't have anything in mind. I'm just literally adding. That's cute. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. I like this silver and gold theme that I have going on. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. That is so freaking cute. It's like so simple, but so pretty. So now for the thumb, I'm gonna do another big piece like that. Just like that. And I really want to keep them matte because that is so freaking cute. Okay, so now I'm going to spray them with the activator spray. 
did want to do like a matte top coat, but I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna keep them shiny. So of course I'm gonna go in with my IBD gel top coat. And I'm just gonna be doing the top coat around the bling. And I'm just using my Melody Susie UV LED lamp. And again, we're using my SS6, SS12, my Mia Secret Gel Resin. I'm using the bigger pieces, my IBD Gel Top Coat, and my Wax Pencil, as well as the activator. And I ran out of the Mia Secret Gel Resin Activator today, so I have this one that I got from my teacher. She was, going to, she was going to throw them away because they were so old and I was looking at them and it says resin activator so I figured that it was the same thing as the Mia Seeker one just a different brand and she had quite a few so I think I grabbed like three bottles I've used one already and then this is my second one and I have one more and it dried them the same way and this is by All Seasons Nails and I'm pretty sure this is really old because she had a lot of old products but it probably came from Sally's. I'm not sure because I know they used to donate a lot of products to the school. But it just looks like this. And it's the resin activator. So it's the, it does the same thing. It dries the Mia Secret Gel Resin Activator. But like I said before, you don't need the activator. But I do recommend it because since it is thicker than just regular glue, it does take a bit longer to dry. okay so here's what they look like they're really shiny and really really pretty so i'm gonna go ahead and do the other hand the same way um yeah guys I, I really like this hand so i'm gonna go ahead and do this one the same way so let me see i'm gonna go ahead and get my two bigger pieces for my thumb and my middle finger and then i'm gonna go ahead and get this one out of the way
much effort to not get it on the actual blend. Alrighty y'all, so here is the final look. They turned out really pretty. They're pretty simple yet really, really pretty. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at GetNo32. And I hope everybody has a wonderful Christmas and New Year's. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.